as some of you may have already guessed, we're getting married. We are. <laughs> this could be the show of our generation, or at least a generation. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks from the top 10 moments from girls. I have. I have, and I'm sorry. For this list, we've selected the most memorable and or funniest moments from Lena Dunham's millennial comedy series. Yeah, but what about the stuff that gets up around the sides of condoms, okay? What about that stuff? Number 10. Elijah Comes Out. All adventurous women do. And I brought you here to talk about something pretty specific, mm -hmm. which is a little bit touchy. All right. Meeting with an ex can be hard. The meeting will even be harder if you accuse your ex of giving you HPV. And then he comes out to you. So... Oh. You're gay. Oh, well, I don't, um... I don't say... gay. I don't say straight, either. I'm, I'm, I'm with a person of my own gender, which, which essentially means that I am, you know... Spiritic. This is what happens to Hannah in just the third episode of the series. Suffice it to say, she does not take it well, and the evening goes even more downhill from there. After the exes start getting defensive, they begin to hurl hilarious insults at one another. This fruity little voice that you've put Excuse on... Excuse me? ...is a new thing. Fruity little voice? Fruity little voice? Keep your fucking down. Seeing Elijah take down Hannah's logic is uncomfortable, but also somewhat satisfying, and ends with some unforgettable last words. Your dad is gay. No. The character of Elijah Krantz turned out to be so popular that actor Andrew Rannells was upgraded to series regular as of season four. Ah! What are you even doing? Calm down. On the way here from the airport, two people asked me if I was Blake Lively's husband. I was amazing. Number nine, Shoshana's Craxident. Welcome to Bushwick, AKA the Craxident. I've been looking for you. Um, I just had this like crazy realization. It's kind of amazing and I'm gonna share it with you right now, okay? Yeah. Shoshana is the youngest and most naive of the main girls. And never is that more apparent than when she accidentally smokes crack at a warehouse party. You smoked crack. You smoked just some crack. Oh my God, don't tell my mom. Don't even tell me. I matriculated in my you and I just smoked crack. What's gonna happen? Already possessing a bubbly personality that verges on insanity, she becomes unhinged and runs away from her friends after taking the drug. This leaves her with Ray, whom she barely knows. Shoshan Crack is funny enough, but what makes the scene even better is the development of her relationship with Ray, which only grows more complex as the series progresses. There are a lot of lessons to learn from these girls, but not to smoke from a mysterious pipe is arguably the most important. At least from this scene it is. But I could like, massage you in a non-sexual way. You want to massage my groin in a non-sexual way? Yeah, yeah. If it'll help. Number eight, Charlie's return. The panic in Central Park. I love you. Maybe I'm an idiot for it, but I always have. Christopher Abbott's abrupt departure from the series after the season two finale left Marnie without her longtime boyfriend, Charlie, just after she got serious with him. And she hasn't quite been the same since. I mean, we bought the ingredients to make grilled pizzas, and we were going to make grilled pizzas, and the day we were supposed to do that, he left me. His surprise return in season five was just what she needed, but not in the way you would expect. After spending a night with him and thinking about running away, she discovers his newfound drug addiction, and her dream is shattered. Charlie? Charlie? Yeah. What the f is this needle? Oh. I'm diabetic. This heartbreaking reveal marked a major turning point in Marnie's character development and helped her to realize that she's the only one who can make herself feel finally fulfilled. I don't want to be married to you. Number seven, being honest is fun. Beach House. No one ever said that being friends is easy, and certainly no one from this series ever did. During a getaway to a beach house, Emotions run high after Shoshana has a few drinks of liquid courage. Can you chill the f out about dinner? Seriously, that duck tasted like a used condom and I want to forget about it. Shosh has gone totally insane. What follows is a brutal takedown of each main character in the series. Harsh words are shot all over the room. And though they are altogether funny yet painfully true, it's also an uncomfortable moment that illustrates how very complex the relationships are between these girls. I would call you a little unstimulating. 
unstimulating? What are we in, like a f***ing Jane Austen novel? What do I want to be like you, like mentally ill and miserable? When the dust has settled, the foursome makes up with an impromptu dance, and it's clear that they can make it through anything. Number six, Caroline gives birth, home birth. I got fired because apparently nobody trusts a young, beautiful teacher. They only want old, stinky ones. Caroline, Adam's older sister, is one of the more eccentric characters on Girls, and that's really saying something. She eventually becomes involved with Hannah's downstairs neighbor, Laird, an ex-drug addict, and insists on a home birth in the season four finale, which results in some rather uncomfortable nudity and an awkward bath removal. <laughs> I saw a foot. Ultimately, she has to be taken to the hospital before she can pay homage to her friends by naming her child Jessa Hannah Bluebell Poem Schlesinger Sackler. Four and a half pounds of pure love and forgiveness. It's also an unexpected moment for Adam's character, who tells Hannah that he wants her back. I miss you so badly. I think I just got lost to it at all. And I didn't hold on to the right stuff, and I let my center move. And I just got lost. Number five, sorry that wasn't for you, Hannah's Diary. What? What's up? <sighs> Girls doesn't shy away from the uncomfortable side of sex. When Adam, Hannah's friend with benefits, sends her a photo of his <clears throat> privates, She's confounded, but somewhat proud. It's him. Oh my god. I don't know. It's probably like his asshole wearing a friendship bracelet. That is, until he points out that it wasn't actually meant for her. Naturally, she responds with a topless photo of herself. This moment exhibits the awkwardness of sex and relationships in this generation, which the show does so well in general. It additionally marks a turning point in Adam and Hannah's relationship, as it causes her to discover what she really wants in a relationship. I just want someone who wants to hang out all the time and thinks I'm the best person in the world and wants to have sex with only me. Number four, you're the wound. Leave me alone. Did you give him a key to our apartment? The events of the first season strained the relationship between roommates Marnie and Hannah and ultimately resulted in this intense argument. I pay all the bills in this apartment. Does that not give me like one night off from talking about you and your problems? A simple conversation goes awry and the two begin to psychoanalyze each other while laying out issues that have been bubbling under the surface for some time. The dialogue brilliantly builds to the cruel screaming match that it becomes and masterfully captures the experience of two close friends having a serious yet frivolous fight. You are the wound. I am not the wound. You are the wound. You're the wound. You're, you're the wound. You are the wound. Stop saying that. The barbs dig deep and it's both unpleasant to watch and impossible to look away from, much like a train wreck. It's an apt comparison. I do not want to live here anymore. Not with you. Yeah, well, I don't want to live with you anymore either. And I am not just saying that because you said it. I was thinking it, but I did not want to say it because I am a good friend and you are a bad friend. Fine! Number three, Hannah's Diary. Hannah's Diary. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. No, 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 come on, dude, don't read that. That's Hannah's journal. In a show with no real villains or heroes, it's not surprising that there are times when it's hard to decide who's in the wrong. Case in point, when Charlie and Ray snoop around Hannah's room, the discovery and reading of her diary by Ray leads Charlie to question his relationship with Marnie. What? Hey. Huh? What's up? Nothing. Let's go back to that table. We got a lot of work. No, 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 no. What? Let me see it. Dude, your girlfriend is the most boring person on the planet. Charlie subsequently decides to perform her writings as a song in front of both of them at his concert. It's an uncomfortable moment that's difficult for everyone as they slowly discover what's happening, except for Shoshana. How does it feel to date a man with a vagina? Doesn't she want to feel an actual penis? Is this a love song? Marnie's cold exit from the scene stings almost as much as ice down Hannah's shirt. Thank you uh, very much for all coming out and everyone have a great night. Oh, man. Oh. Number two, Wednesday night cocaine. Bad friend. 
This is not going to be a night of driving around in your mom's Volvo with a bottle of cough syrup and a box of cold McNuggets. Putting Hannah and Elijah together always proves to be comic gold, as does giving the characters hard drugs. And when you put both of these things together, this is what we get. It is my greatest dream to have sex with myself, but also my biggest nightmare. Hoping to gain life experience to write about, Hannah decides to do some cocaine with Elijah in the early evening. This leads to an energetic night of partying, shirt swapping, and Icona pop. Things really get exciting when Elijah decides to spill the beans about a secret that Hannah isn't too happy about. It's just amazing. I just, I feel like I wanna, I just wanna be so honest with you right now. I wanna I be want super that. honest. I want that. Like I wanna tell you, I wanna tell you that I Marnie. The night ends with a particularly vitriolic speech from Hannah and a fight with Marnie as well as with Hannah losing yet another roommate. You know you're moving out, right? Me? <laughs> yeah, you are not going to live with me anymore. Full of bad decisions and complicated interpersonal relationships, not to mention a hookup between Marnie and Booth Jonathan, this episode is everything that makes girls so much fun. <sighs> Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Thanks for stopping by, kid. Thank you for stopping by. But maybe don't call me kid anymore. Okay, sure. You've never done it before. And thusly, I am teaching you how it's done. And, you know, that's a lot of power, which I don't know if I deserve. Okay. But I probably do. I want to be balls deep in something, and I don't even care what it is. No more excluding me, Mary Poppins. It's not fair. I want to be part of the group. Oh, that will n n never happen. Just. Ah! Ah! I feel there's something I want to share with you. You do? Yeah, I do. Uh, I've been thinking lately that I'm, um, I'm gay. What? And not lately, actually, for a while. Shut <laughs> up, Dad. What is this, one of your stupid pranks? No, it's not. Lorene, you have to listen to me. I think I'm gay. You think? No, I am. I don't think I am. You really don't get it, do you? No, no, I really don't. Hannah is my dearest friend. She will always come first. We may not be talking right now. And I hope to God that that changes. So you saying that she's not in our lives anymore doesn't work for me. Number one, Adam runs to Hannah, together. All right, I'm gonna head back inside. It was good seeing you. You should get some rest, you look pretty tired. So put some pants on. While Adam isn't always the most likable character, he's at his best when his love for Hannah shines through. After a particularly hard time that involves an unfortunate haircut, Hannah has hit rock bottom. It's not like any of them want to talk to me. I don't play them because I cut off all my f***ing hair. Despite their being estranged, Adam decides to come to her rescue out of concern for her. There's not a dry eye in the house when he tells her that he was always there for her. For Hannah, it's a huge moment since she finally gives in and allows herself to be loved. It shows us how great these two can be together when Adam's quirkiness balances out Hannah's instability. It's simple, it's beautiful, and it's our number one girls moment. Do you agree with our list? Yeah, feel it. What's your favorite girls moment? Make me want to be the best version of myself, and I just want to be your girlfriend again, and I want to pretend that I was never not your girlfriend before. For more memorable top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. It's really hot. I'm oh. really, really hot. Yeah, you'll just get used to it. Uh, yeah. It's okay, it's just new. Mm. Okay. Mm.